Welcome to the Hump Day Happy Hour. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Oh, and we're a million dollar peddlers. Kind of screwed that all up. Yeah, that is true. We did the salute early, and uh, guess what we had today? Well, you know what we had. I do know. We actually had some moonshine from the backwoods of our back hills of South Carolina. <laughs> Picked it up from a uh, buddy of mine a few years ago, and that was actually kind of weird because I was going through, uh, well, through state lines and all that, and hoping the revenuers didn't pull me over. Um, pretty good, pretty tasty, though, I would good. say. Yeah, very actually, good. Actually, pretty good. Those, uh, yeah. those backwood boys know what they're doing. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> well, I don't know what he paid for it, <laughs> but not even going to ask. Um, so, I want to shout out to a good friend of the channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter. Uh, his live show is after ours, and he's got uh, reselling game shows and giveaways. I like giveaways. I do. I, I, I can afford I giveaways. Give me stuff for sure. There you go. With Nanatink and Victoria. All right. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, All right. Any well, let's see who's in the house. Uh, Scorpio Queen. She's been here since 3 a.m., so thank you for staying all that time. <laughs> <laughs> Thrifty, healthy, healthy, and happy. How's it going? Everyone's on time, it seems. Dawn's on time. Great. We hit her the whole time. Lisa's here. How's it going? Uh, let's see. Brian, the oak book picker. Yeah, book you, can picker. Move, you can move forward. I don't like moving reading. forward. I'm comfortable where I am. All right. I'll move a little forward. Here we go. All right. Paul Tidwell. How's it going, buddy? I think we got that covered. We ready to rock? We are ready to rock and All roll. Right. Um, so today's show is going to be a little different. Um, an awful lot of people, and, and rightly so, and, and we joined in the piling on as well. Uh, a lot of people have been very anti eBay lately uh, between the adults and between uh, all the other things going on, the item specifics. Oh, yeah. you know, so even if you don't sell adult, the item, item specifics probably has affected you in a, in a negative way. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people are asking, does eBay know what they're doing? Have they lost their way, et cetera, et cetera. And those are all valid criticisms. I mean, we've made those criticisms as, as well. I, I can't say they're not valid. Yeah. That being said, I wanted to step back this week and I wanted to kind of take a look at the bigger picture, uh, what eBay is and, and Amazon for that matter, and the opportunities that it's afforded us. And uh, gonna, you're going to tell your story a little more tonight and all that sort of thing. And, and I think it's time that, that people kind of do realize that for all its faults, uh, eBay is, is absolutely wonderful and gives us opportunities that, that would not have been there for us. So that's yeah. what we're going to get to a little later um, after our usual nonsense. Looks like a few other people showed up here, and then we'll... Big trolls here. Oh, playoff beards. We got some playoff beards going on. <laughs> yeah. And, yes, no he, neck beard, though. He, he did call me old pretty much in his own way, even though he's older than me, but, you know. Uh, Ingrid Wells. Hello from Virginia. How's it going? Oh, okay. Oh, um, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready on the next thing. Got to read this. Hold I on. No, I missed a couple. See, it's, oh, it's, see? It's, you know, I'm off my game. Linda's in the house. Michelle's in the house. Jason's in the house. Rebel reseller. Let's knock it out. I think we're good to go. Now. Oh, Rebel reseller. Um, she's actually got a, a channel that I've seen a couple of, of the uh, episodes of. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Check, check her out. Definitely. Um, did want to talk about, uh, well, last week's show was, was a lot of fun. And I definitely wanted to give a shout out to uh, the various people. And again, this is our only shameless plug. I, I promise uh, to the people using the affiliate link, it's easy enough to find, and you click on the affiliate link uh, for Amazon or eBay, you go onto the site, and anything that you purchase, so we we get a potentially get a percentage back on it. It definitely it, it helps the channel out, no cost to you. So just when you go on eBay or Amazon in the morning, uh, just click on that and, and reach the site through that. And if you buy anything during the day, and it, did you get the um, five percent eBay box? I don't believe so. Now you Unless probably in, you probably did. You just don't check your really? your eBay uh, messages. I haven't bought anything in a couple of weeks, so yeah. So um, and there, I got, and I know a couple of other people got five percent eBay bucks for three days uh, oh. for spring savings. Nice. Um, and I always feel that when they're doing that, they're noticing that the sales are down because yeah. why are they pushing pushing True. that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a five percent. So check your uh, messages over on eBay. Um, but let me ask the question that's on everybody's mind. All right. How was your lip after that tragic injury? I have had a lot of people concerned about this. <laughs> I'm definitely healing well. There's a little speck left. Uh, I'm a picker, so I think it takes longer to heal because I like to you know, bite and pick and stuff. But give it a few more days. I think we'll be good through the weekend. Thank you for asking, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't honestly know, uh, Paul. Um, probably. I'm wearing an orange shirt, so it doesn't really look right. What I'll do is random neighborhood kids off at work, so... 
Well, I'll kind of talk to him after the show to see if we can't do that. Um, I know the lighting's not the best, and I do apologize for that. I think it's fine. Maybe we're just pale from that shot. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, who knows what was in that? <laughs> exactly. Um, while, while we're talking about injuries, I'm going to tell you about a quick injury before we head into the regular show. Go. I have Here to, I have to outdo you. I have to oh, be a topper. Is it, this isn't the, the, the... No, you don't know this oh, story. All right, all right. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, so over the weekend, I made the mistake of doing some yard work. And I trimmed the bushes out front. And it was either uh, because I don't have a large enough ladder, it's a step ladder, and I'm yeah. stretching forward to, to do the uh, trimming. Or you ever do it where you're like walking down steps or off a ladder and you misjudge the distance and you like slam down because you're like one step off of where you thought you were? No, I have my depth perception though. So thank oh, you though. Well, I, I don't. So oh. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Thank you for pointing that out. Now my disabilities for all the world to know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I hit the ground really, really hard. Yesterday, my knee was squishy. Oh. I don't know if you've ever had that before, but literally it was sure. squishy. Um, woke up this morning and it was fine. So I don't know exactly what I did to myself, but nice. I'm monitoring that knee. Does not feel good to say the least. Nice. Um, I'm getting too old to do yard work. That's what it comes down to. Um, oh, and also wanted to thank a lot of people. A lot of people reached out to us, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, things like that. Uh, asking some questions, wanting a little bit of guidance. And a lot of people were talking about the video that we put up um, in regard to the web interpret. Okay. And a lot of people were asking some basic questions about eBay international shipping or shipping internationally and that kind of thing. So we're actually going to be doing a uh, show about that. We do the studio shows. We're shooting them this Saturday. So we're going to be doing a studio show about international shipping because a lot of people seem to have a, a lot of trepidation about shipping things yeah. internationally. So I, I think we can put your mind at ease a little bit. Um, are there risks? Yes, there are. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Would I want to ship a $10,000 item overseas? Uh, not really. But for the stuff that we sell, the you know, $20, $30, $40 range, you definitely can make a fair amount of money doing it. And that kind of ties all into the web interpret as well. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of good. Oh, there you go. No, I oh, come on over. <laughs> we're, we're on the air for another 54 minutes. So if you can make it, that'd be great. Um, just uh, contact us after you can reach us over on Instagram um, and just kind of give me an idea of what to tell a random neighborhood kid and we'll get it taken care of. Uh, not a problem whatsoever. Like I said, he's, he's off at work because his job won't let him be here. Um, they're mean, big blue meanies. Hmm. Um, so any buys or anything this week? Yes. As a matter of fact, I had uh my driver, Gil, from Ohio, had three buys on his way from Ohio to Pennsylvania to Rochester, and now he's on his way back. But here's a picture of his truck with 4,000 magazines in it. He just bought this truck, and you can see that it's inches oh, away from the ground. Oh, he's a low yeah, rider. See, yeah, see, definitely is a low rider. He just bought that vehicle, said 100,000 miles on it. Oh, all right, and all he, right. I was going to say, if he bought that new. <laughs> he's going to need some shocks. So, the, you know, the three, he didn't realize how much weight the three deals would have together. Um, and he packed them in all the way to the top. So he's on his way back to Ohio now. But uh, good for him, good for me. And uh, What kind of things? Um, it was probably 75% uh, non-adult magazines, 25% okay. adult magazines. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so I didn't end up going to the flea. I went to the uh, – well, the local flea didn't actually have the flea. It had a flower sale. My, my wife wanted to get some flowers, which is wonderful because I'm allergic. Uh, anybody out there that's allergic to flowers, let me give you a quick tip. Wear your mask because actually sense. my eyes were not watering yeah. nearly as much with the mask. And when you see somebody rocking the flower show in 2024 wearing a mask, come up to me and say, hey, paper guy, I saw you. Yeah. I saw you on the Million Dollar Peddlers. <laughs> Um, did buy one small collection off of a mutual friend of ours, a dealer that's kind of not so much getting out of the business, but downsizing some stuff. Yeah. He had two sites and he wanted to get rid of the stuff off the one site. Uh, so that was about the only buy, but probably, hopefully going to have a bonus video up next Monday, a haul video. Uh, I'm actually going two and a half hours away to a big antique show. Um, and I've gone to the show that they have in August. I've never gone to the one in June. Uh, hopefully, I come back with just uh, you know a great video for you guys. Uh, a truck like Gil. <laughs> I don't know if my wife would like that quite so much. <laughs> well, Mrs. She, she'd have to Uber her home, and then because he, he had <laughs> magazines in his front seat all the way to the ceiling too. So. Hmm. I love you, but these are really good magazines. <laughs> yeah, that'll, <laughs> that'll go really well. Maybe I can Uber the magazines up. Yeah. Um, 
So hopefully we have a haul video coming up on Monday. Wish, wish us luck on that over there. Looks like a few other people have shown yeah. up over here. Sensible Treasures in the house like always. How's it going? Santiago Melendez, how's it going? Everyone's good to go here. Oh, hold on. Lisa, yeah, she can relate to your injury. There we go. Vintage laundry hamper and almost killed myself. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You just brace yourself for the ground being where the ground is. Yeah. And when it's not where it's supposed to be, you jar yourself. I mean, and that knee, I was like, whoa, like that over there. Does not feel good at all. Um, and actually what what Mr. Magazine said is true. I do not have any depth perception. So that is absolutely true. Um, 20. 400 i believe it's 2400 vision in my left eye no. so yeah i'm really rocking the left eye over there well, um they, they need to make every house like that first floor laundry so no one has to go downstairs or upstairs save a lot of injuries that way that is true yeah. or just don't sell houses people with no depth perception that would work as well of course, yeah. <laughs> so why did i just do a little bit of random talking right now that's that's a change yeah um have you noticed when you're purchasing things on eBay, have you noticed them when they do and when they do not charge you sales tax? I do not pay attention to that. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. It's kind of weird. They used to not charge it on comic books for me. Right. Now they charge me sales tax on comic books, which isn't a big deal. I pay the sales tax um, and then I just take it off my use tax. New York State requires you to pay use tax. So in other words, if I were to buy something or other uh, using my sales tax number that I then took out for personal use, I owe use tax on it. Um, so I just kind of keep track of sales tax that I paid that I didn't need to pay. Same thing if I go to a thrift store, you know, I'm going to really worry about sales tax on a dollar item. I just paid a dollar a right. keep track of it and then I, I balance it out against the use tax that I have to pay. But they do not charge me sales tax on magazines. Um, is there a rhyme or reason? My only thought is uh, New York State may not charge sales tax on magazines at the uh, counter. So, so, so it's any magazine, the new rule. Uh, I think you're supposed to charge it on the old ones, but I don't think eBay's uh, software, software can figure out the age yeah. of it and all that. Hmm. And speaking about uh, eBay and its software, guess what I am finally done with? Oh, you're uh, item specific? I am done with all 900 item specifics. For Those now or done. for good? <laughs> Thank you for reigning in my praise. This is a positive show. Um, one thing, though, that I did notice, um, eBay does not have, on the item specifics with the years, there is no option for a year prior to 1900. So when I've got these 1880 magazines, yeah. I cannot put an item specific in for the year. Now, why it doesn't say pre-1900, I don't know. But yeah, I looked and it stops at 1900. <laughs> Um, apparently, you can't sell magazines prior to 1900. Wow. Or the other thought is maybe they want those over the antique section. I, I really yeah. don't know, but but yeah, there is no item specific yeah. for you know the 1885. I go to type that in, and it will not take that number. Wow. Just got back from a first day of state sale. This started at five. Picked up over a thousand thirty-five millimeter nice. slices for sixteen dollars. Can't argue with that. Wow. And that was an interesting thing. Somebody um, commented on our. YouTube, and we do put up a post. Um, every day we're putting up a post. You probably didn't know this, but every day sure, we're putting up a sure post. And uh, <laughs> the gentleman was talking about a postcard deal that he had received or he had picked up mm -hmm. 20,000 postcards for $50. And I said, impossible well, to lose money at that kind of deal. A million dollar postcard guy better drop his price. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's got some competition. <laughs> but yeah, because he was telling me, oh, hopefully you didn't pay for that postcard. I've got a postcard like that. And I said, no, I didn't pick that post. You know, it's just a postcard that kind of yeah. shows up in some deal somewhere or other. I didn't buy it intentionally. Uh, mm, I just found a 1985 cool. Barbie Dream House. Oh, very ooh. good deal there. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, and the church sales, like, like I, I absolutely swear by them. Uh, they want the stuff gone. Absolutely, the best place to buy things, with, without a doubt whatsoever. Those are those are the best. They just want the stuff out of sure. there. Yeah, just definitely good want cause. it out. And and yeah, it's yeah. a good cause too. Yeah. yeah, and and they don't care about the value of it or anything at all like that. Um, oh, you had a fun day today. Yeah, where do I begin today? <laughs> it's your segment. You can begin anywhere you want. Well, let's start with eBay. We're going to go backwards. So before I left to go to the warehouse, okay. I had my manager on with eBay because of this invoicing issue. Oh, okay. If you're aware of. So, well, they're not aware. Why don't no. you tell them? So, and it's been happening more and more lately, but now they're having trouble with the buyers paying for their items. So generally when you invoice people, five items, 10 items, 20, not a problem. You know, I factor in a handling, you know, but anytime they go 40 or more 
items to invoice together, it screws up their system for whatever reason. And then you can't invoice them and they have trouble paying. But generally, if you just keep trying and trying over a couple of days, it usually will go through eventually for them. Mm -hmm. So say, you know, Joe Schmo buys 48 magazines. Well, I can invoice them 40 sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And then there's eight more. So I got to wait for the 40 to go through. So if I try the eight, the eight will turn into the 40. Could you do two two twenty four invoices? Well, I don't think so. I don't think you can change unless you like unclick. Yeah, them. unclick them. I wonder I, if you could do twenty four and twenty four. So you know, if you're persistent, and you stick with it. Eventually, the forty will go through, and then the eight will go through. Mm -hmm. It might take a day or two, or a couple of times through the day. Well, I got this other customer of mine now. He's making a move, and buying a ton of the adult stuff before it closes up. I think he's got like a hundred items. So it should be two forties and a twenty. Well, it's a forty. It's a 10, it's a 30, and then the last 20 are all individual. And when I go to invoice them together, it's not allowing me other than the 40, and he still can't pay for the 40 or any of them. And I had another customer with the same issue. He bought 40, and there's like a 10, a 5, and then like 30 or 25 singles. So she was on with him for a half hour. Um, they're working on it. One guy, they think they fixed it on the second guy. The first guy, they're working on it, but they're going to contact both of them and say, you know, don't cancel nothing. We're working on the fix. We'll have it done soon. But, yeah, it's definitely frustrating because it's like $2,000 between the two orders, and you don't want these guys to, get, you know, frustrate and just cancel them. You know? It makes me wonder what um, sports car dealers do because yeah, you would think they run into it sure. regularly. And, yeah. you know, so if, if I'm sitting there and buying, you know, I'm working on a set, and they've got yeah. 58 cards that I need, and I buy right. 58 of them. Yeah. Um, let's deviate for a second. We'll go back to your wonderful day. Um <laughs> You, you did you see? And I know you did. You sent it to me. Uh, eBay's no longer allowing uh, retractions of bids in the sports cars. You have to okay yes. retraction of a Correct. bid. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of speculation about why that is. Uh, one of the big reasons why is people think that people are bidding them up and it gets too high, and then oh, the prices are going down. So then they they retract their bid, or they're looking for like a ten a mint ten raw, and then maybe they'll look at better later on. Say, oh, it's not. Forget it. And they pull yeah. back. Yeah. Yep. My only thought is I, I know that eBay wants that to uh, to keep people from, you know, doing that. But the other side of it is all that I think is going to happen is they're going to win it because they have to win it. And yeah. then they're just not going to pay, you know. Oh, so, right. Exactly. Right. So I don't think it's going to yeah. change that any. Um, right. So I, I don't think there's really any kind of fix in it. I mean, it's a volatile market. People right. are bidding and then they go, I don't want it. It's gone down in value yeah. or, you know, or. You've got a Zion Williamson, God forbid, you know, you got a Zion Williamson yeah. or, or Joe Burrow. Perfect example. You got a Joe Burrow card up. He gets injured. Right. The card is ending in two days and suddenly everybody's retracting because, yeah. oh, he's not worth that. He's injured. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. They put a lot of time and effort into some of these rules that uh, don't make sense really, but, you know, it, it is a, what it is. So Don was on the phone for an hour, but we were able to find the amount the customer still owed and sent an invoice for the ones she hadn't paid for yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's. I know it's supposed to be a pro eBay one, but that is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, very. definitely is frustrating on that. Luckily, I don't think anybody buys more than one item off me. So for once, I don't have to yeah. worry about something. But yeah. what happened before you were on the phone? Right, now eBay? I'm going backwards a few stages to get to the first, you know, my 10 a.m. appointment. So Oh, this is like one of those movies yeah, that you don't know where so, you are in the plot line. Uh, I'm going to ramble on a little bit, but, you know. So the call before that, my air conditioning went in my house, so my air conditioning guy has to put a new air conditioning unit. That's thousands of dollars. The call before that, I had to get a new pool cleaner because my pool guy let, put all the leaves in and my pool cleaner shot. That's another $600. Um, before that, geez, we'll, we'll go right to the accountant then. So I had a meeting <laughs> with my accountant and my attorney. The problem is my attorney screwed up the time, so he couldn't make it. So I sat in with my accountant, which... You know, it was, uh, it, was, it was a mind melt. You know, I, I try and understand everything, do the best I can. Um, you know, Paper Goy couldn't be with me. He knows a lot of that stuff. But he basically wants to restructure all my companies into separate LLCs to protect, protect me from, you, you know, from mm -hmm. whatever. Liability. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, um, yeah, it was uh, It's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of time and effort. But uh, we're going to do it to do it right. You know, so, do it right. so what are you doing Monday at night? I have a meeting with him again and Paperboy. Yeah, uh, we'll have some yeah. success this time. You know, <laughs> I sat in there for two hours while he jotted stuff down, and uh, I kind of know what he's talking about, but uh, I need some professionals in there with me. So, and having the background that I have, I I, I can speak accountants and I can speak reseller, <laughs> so I'm going to end yeah. up being the uh, 
I'm going to be the Google Translate, yeah. as it were. Well, and my attorney is actually going to do the one thing. <laughs> He's actually going to show up. That's Hopefully. So we'll, yeah, we'll get it all done this week. Hopefully, we, you know, put the ball in motion. So how are um, – we never even got to this. We usually have this as our pretty early part of our thing. How are sales? Uh, sales are okay. Um, I can't complain too much. They could be better. They're a little on the low side, you know, but uh, we're plugging away. Um, you know, it's not like we're quitting anytime soon. We got to, you know, hang in there, especially with the the hundred thousand listings we're going to lose in a couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, it's all you can do. Whatever, you know, we're get, I'm getting my my listers are listing more, and my pullers are pulling more. So they're not. I'm not taking my listers off. Oh right, listing right, right. The pull. So we got all hands on deck listing as much as we can get on there, especially eBay to make up for some of the future adult sale losses we're going to have. So it'll work out. Just got to give it some time. Hang in there. Yeah, my sales are. Um, thank you for asking, by the way, about my sales. My sales. Well, are, we all know you're going to tell us. <laughs> we have what? We have 40 minutes left. I'm pretty sure you're going to find some time in there to. Wow. Um, sales have been. Re today has been, been a bit slow, but other than today, sales have been absolutely steady. It's it's almost like Groundhog Day. Every day, the sales are the same, the same, the same, which isn't bad. I yeah. mean, I was taking a look at it, and it's. Uh, well, you got to take eBay's figures on their dashboard with a bit of a grain of salt. But according to what they're saying, they're up 53% from the same period a year ago. Wow. So I don't know if that's 100% true or not across all <clears throat> categories, et cetera, et cetera. But they're definitely up from last year. Mm -hmm. You know, So I can't argue. It's almost like I, I've reached a new plateau. And every day it's just kind of there, except today. Today was a slower day. But you know that happens yeah. every once in a while. Holiday weekend well. was still good then? Holiday weekend was pretty yeah, good, well, yeah. Not bad. No. Yours was slow? Uh, eBay was slow, yeah. For the last few days, yeah. Oh, thank you. Lucky, thank you. Finds, Lucky thank finds, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Carl, the resellers in it. Oh, the lazy resellers in it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Carl, the resellers all upset. He was, I'm not <laughs> yeah, here. Exactly. Just the lazy ones here. <laughs> hey, he showed up. You're not that lazy. Um, and then another thing I did find when I was going through my item specifics, I had a comic book that they actually moved to audiobooks. Oh. Wasn't that nice of them? No idea why. And I know that a friend of the channel, Auction Professor, has done a, uh, a video where he said, definitely do take a look at your invoices because if they are moving your categories, uh, which they did it on one of mine, yeah. um, I don't know of any others at this point, but if they are moving your categories, if the various things in there were free, like the, um, like the gallery photo and all yeah. that stuff, if those are free in one category, they're not necessarily free in another category. Um, so I've been... I do my book my book work once a week. I download a report off eBay and take a look at it. And I've not seen any extra charges, but mm -hmm. I'm going to check every week on that over there just to make sure that they haven't moved something or other and, and hitting me with the charge. Because right. not that a dollar is going to make or break me, right? but I don't want to pay them a dollar this month and a dollar next month and a dollar the month after on some item right. that I don't know got moved. Because yeah. by the time you're done with it, you paid $14 to sell a $10 item. You don't yeah. stay in business that long doing that. No, definitely not. You know, I, I can talk to the accountant and he'll probably agree with me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the old man's it. picks. Definitely do appreciate that. Um, oh, I've been busy this week too. I forgot how busy I was this week. Well, how busy were you? <laughs> wow, we sound like a real yeah, we're we're practicing for prime time's game show. Yeah, exactly. How busy were you? <laughs> Great Greta was so big. Um, anywho, so I did end up buying uh, buying, whatever you want to call it, papergoy.com. Oh, nice. I locked that down. I know okay. we mentioned a couple of weeks ago we locked down milliondollarpeddlers.com. Mm -hmm. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, did have the site yeah. available. So if I did ever want to do anything. Um, before I tell, well, another couple of things. I have started listing on the weekends 10 and during the week five postcards on Viv's dash views. Yeah, nice. And I'm also listing on the weekends 10 comics and then during the week five comics on million dot dollar dot peddlers on eBay. Where do you find the time? Seriously? <laughs> well, this is what's funny. We're talking old school listings. We're talking yeah. take the pictures and list it. Yeah. And sort it out. And I'm hammering those out. And I'm getting the five comic books up in like seven minutes on ebay okay, type nice. deal yeah. i mean we're talking the old old school yeah. no research um right. i'm leaving money on the table there's no doubt at all about it uh, yeah. i'm listing it all into the store the comics are i think i'm asking ten dollars plus shipping the postcards i think i'm asking ten dollars with free shipping uh because i figure i can use the 51 cent shipping yeah. on those um doing no research whatsoever on them will i know enough about comics and i know some about postcards 
that obviously if, if I think it's going to, you know, it's not like I'm going to list to put a Hulk 181 up there in the store right. for that no, price. Right. I know enough about that, yeah. but I may miss some stuff. I would love to see what it would sell for though. <laughs> well, no, I'm putting it in store at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it would yeah. sell for the $10. Yeah, okay. Right no, away. I don't want to do that. Maybe a reprint. <laughs> <laughs> so I am leaving money on the table when the things sell. There's no yeah. doubt at all, all about that, but I'm getting them up quickly. And as you can attest, I've got a, Lot. <laughs> we'll, we'll say that. I was going to say something not quite so nice, an S-ton of <laughs> inventory. Right. Um, I haven't bought postcards in years. I've got so many of them that just come in in other deals. Uh, comics I have purchased, but I, I but I pulled the better stuff out to, right. to sell and all that. Sure. So, you know, and this stuff isn't junk. I mean, we're talking, you know, 1970s uh, DC horror comics, things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they will sell. Right. So I'm just pounding them out five a day and trying to build those up. Yeah. Um, you want to see who's in the chat, and then I've got a question for you. I'm going to tell you the other oh, thing I've been Jason doing. Jason agreed that uh, things are slow. Oh, store on yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about yeah. doing that. Yeah, rough for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's an eBay thing, apparently. You know. Yeah, mine were not bad. Um, I cannot complain. Oh, lazy reseller, listing comics. Oh, nice. Old collection. Too yeah. bad it's mostly late 80s. You'd be surprised, though. What is the one? Um, there are some good stuff. Is it Detective there. Comics with Killer Croc first appearance? Of That's a good one. Yeah. Jason Todd, was yeah, it or something some like that? There's some hundred dollar issues from that era. Sure, absolutely. But uh, no, uh, I don't think there is. Um, <clears throat> what I do is I kind of follow what Auction Professor suggested. I used to send them out once a day. Now, literally, if I see two or more, I send them out. And the reason why two or more is if you just have one, sometimes it takes you right to the listing. Sometimes there's a little bit of a glitch. But if I see two or more, I just send them right out. Um, so I think the more often you send them out, the more often you're potentially yeah, going to Yeah, I, I definitely do them daily. You know, And then they build up and double up if I don't, especially over the weekend. So my employee does them, actually. Yeah, so yeah, I probably do. Day. I probably send them out fifteen times a day. You know, two now, and then I check in an hour, and there's seven. And I send seven out, and that kind of thing. And it definitely does build the sales up, no doubt at all oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. So, I think the other question that's on everybody's mind: How's your Instagram going? Hashtag not. I was just thinking, like, I hope they don't bring it up today. <laughs> Hashtag Listen, not. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be a martyr. It's been a rough week, a rough you know morning. I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. Well, you know what we should do since we film on Saturdays okay, and we do the Peddler Instagram. We do. Maybe get me started on the Mr. Magazine Instagram. There we go. Since it doesn't take very long. You it does just, not. Just push me a little bit. You, we get it started, and then I can take it from there. Well, what Don, I'm, Don, how's that sound? <laughs> Has Don done hers yet? Uh, hashtag probably not. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see a long comment there, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you the exciting thing that I ended up doing. Do you think eBay is ghosting listings for recommended listings? And if so, do you think that starting an item at auction would get more looks than buy it now? We definitely do start everything at auction first. Yeah. Um, the only difference that we have, we both started at auction at pretty much the, the amount we think it's going to go for or what it's worth. Um, the only difference is I put a buy it now, or a best offer feature on the auctions. Mr. Magazine does not. Right. Um, my thought is it gets exposure when you first list it as an auction. It gets exposure when it's ending as an auction because a lot of people will search on auctions ending soonest. Yeah. Then it gets more exposure when you do put it into the store because it shows up as a new listing. Um, so I think I get triple the exposure by doing it that way. Uh, and you'd be surprised. It, it, you do actually, once in a while, do get surprised. We had the one thing in Abolo where it was a uh, theater program. I don't know if you remember that one or not. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, you know, a $20 program and it went for $150. Right. And that pays for so many auction fees, pays for yeah. a year's worth of auction fees Absolutely. right there just yeah. on that item alone. True. Um, so I don't think it really matters what day. I think the most important thing is that you list. Uh, and I'm in Primetime's Facebook group and people have asked that as well. And, and I think my advice to anybody, list when you can. Uh, don't worry so much about, oh, geez, it's not going to sell so well because it's on a Tuesday. It's not going to... List while you can. If it's a Tuesday morning and you have the ability to list, do it. Uh, because you don't know what Wednesday might bring. You might all of a sudden have a meeting with an accountant and your air conditioner shot just to use that, that as could a could happen. No, yeah. that would never happen to anybody. Yeah. And a pool of yeah. thing. Well, yeah. Everything's breaking down. But guess what I did this week? <laughs> you, 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 your eyes aren't yeah, that yeah, good. Yeah. You cannot read that far. My, um, Etsy. 
I oh. actually have started <laughs> listing on Etsy. Nice. I have not sold anything yet. I'm still learning. Um, the only weird thing that I find about <laughs> Etsy is it's, it's not the easiest to search for category from what I see, but I figured that out. And do you know what an ampersand is? Isn't it an ampersand? It it's like the an ampersand. Ampersand. Yeah. So I was listing something and I put two ampersands in my title and I get a big warning. You're only allowed to use one. Oh, I'm like, okay. okay, that's you an odd know. thing. To, know. That's, that's an odd thing to have a rule about the that number of an, ampersands. You put a lot of thought into that one. <laughs> He's keyword spamming ampersands. Jeez. How dare he? Um, have not sold anything yet on there. Uh, but I, I'm doing the same thing where I'm listing 10 items uh, Saturday, Sunday, and I list the 10 on Monday because I had a day off from work. Mm -hmm. And then I'm listing five uh, during the week. Um, have not, again, I've not sold anything, but got to build it up and we're going to see. It's, it's worth a try. Yeah. And I said, I'm never going to do it if I don't start it. So right. I had to yeah. do it. Um, yeah. One other quick question for you. Sure. You're on the hot seat today. Do you Thanks. know what number live show this is? Any idea? Hold on a minute. Gonna... Okay. You can use your fingers. 15. No, it's only number 10. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> oh, you said live show. Yeah, 10. 10. Yeah. Oh, all right. I was just, because I was figuring out this morning that we have 100, guess what's happening in 146 live shows? Um, we're retiring. I'm retiring from oh, the day job. There you go. So we're going to start doing the countdown when we get to about 50. So something else to look forward to. Maybe there. I can try and sell my business off by then. Yeah, then, then you can come work for me. Yeah. We'll be the million dollar retired guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You, don't you have to have a million dollars to be a million dollar retired guy? That's very true. I'll be the thousand there. Yep. See, same boat as me. <laughs> Thank you for making me look good. <laughs> Old man's picks. Best day in time for ending auctions. I can tell you without a doubt, leave out like the crazy times. And I do list things at crazy times because of my schedule. Yeah. Um, I'm listing stuff at four and five o'clock in the morning. Not really a good time generally. Right. Leave out crazy times, so my times. Um, the worst time to end an auction, I think without a doubt, is about 2 o'clock Eastern on a Sunday during football season. Yeah, I would agree to that. It's, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's amazing that as soon as the 4 o'clock games, or the 1 o'clock games on, so about 4.15 right. uh, during the football season, all of a sudden offers start coming in left and right. It's like everybody was watching the games because yeah. we're East Coast. They're watching the East Coast games. They take a quick look at the West Coast game, the 4 o'clock game, and they say, mm -hmm. oh, I, what do I care about Denver versus San Diego? I'm not going to watch that. They don't watch it. They jump on eBay, and boom, it's yeah. like it's like somebody <clears throat> flipped the switch. So I would definitely say the worst time would be during the, the afternoon football games. Sure. Um, yeah, during, during that, no doubt whatsoever. Yeah, Lisa sells exclusively on Etsy. So, oh, there you go. Some pointers from her. Yes, reach out to me if you yeah. could. Um, I definitely need some pointers on that because again, I, I'm I'm learning it and it's it's different. The other thing that I learned on Etsy is if it's something made from 2000 and sooner, 2002 and sooner, something or other like that, mm -hmm. you have to fill out special boxes on it because mm -hmm. I'm not even sure why. But so I just said it was made in 1990. Well, that's why you can't use two of them. See. Ah, makes sense. Uh, See, learn something new every day. Thank you, Lisa. There we go. I think while my business is young, I need to think about where I'd like to take it. Mul yes, multiple avenues make sense. Still pondering the variety of items I like to have the mess with. Specializing makes sense. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I know we have done videos as well. Um, we've got one up about uh, setting up your inventory system, and we talked yeah. about how poor our inventory systems were back in the day. Oh yeah. And unfortunately YouTube was not around back then. So we learned by trial and error and there's a tremendous advantage. And, and one thing that I'd like to say to anybody watching this, who's doesn't have the experience reselling that we necessarily have. I'm still learning things from other people's videos. I'll watch the videos and I'll say, I never knew that. I never thought of that. Um, yeah. And every once in a while, something will come up and I'll, I'll send it to Mr. Magazine and I'll say, you got to watch this. And just a lot of knowledge out there being shared by a lot of people. Um, of course, I would love to have you watch us exclusively on a loop. But realistically, check out some other people as well. Yeah. Um, there's, there is some great knowledge out there. And I really wish that it were around when we started back in the day. But YouTube wasn't even around yeah. back then. So. Are you using a program like Inkfrog to like link Etsy, not eBay? No, I am not. Uh, I'm just doing it. 
I'm just doing it from scratch. Um, I thought about doing it that way, but I want to kind of learn Etsy a little bit before I go and do that. Their fees are kind of high. They're with the 20 cents for, for a four month listing up front. Um, I'm going to be sinking some money into it to start with, but I want to see, see how that ends up working out. So hopefully yeah. it'll be a, a good journey and hopefully at some point I'll be going, oh my gosh, you all got to try Etsy. But for anybody that hasn't tried it, I'll be the, uh, the guinea pig over here and, and try it out and let you know how it all works out. We're starting to ramp eBay back up and doing 30,000 a month part-time. Wow, nice. that's very, very good. Yeah, 100,000 a month, hard to give love to both. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right on yeah. that. It's it, it's such a time sink. Yeah. Uh, definitely is, that's why I'm making time for the uh, the Viv's views and the uh, million dollar peddlers on eBay. But that's also why I'm doing the, the quick old school listings, just yeah. going boom, 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 yeah. because I don't have time to do research and yeah. that stuff. So is there a $25 postcard I sell for $10? Probably, yeah. Um, but again, you you balance that against the amount of time that I save, and it, it it's a win for me. Just sure. and it's a win for my customer at that oh, point yeah. too. Definitely. definitely, yeah, definitely. That's he's only for vintage or handmade by you. Yeah, I'm I'm trying out some different things. Um, do do check me out. I am paper going on Etsy. Uh, I don't know what you call it, a booth. I guess is what you would call it. Check it out and give me some pointers. I definitely would appreciate it. Um, I'm kind of, as I'm going through things that I think might be used, I know a lot of scrapbookers use it and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm putting up things that I, that I think have eye appeal and putting those up. So definitely would appreciate you taking a look at it. Reach out to us uh, via Instagram or, or via the YouTube channel uh, with any tips you may have. I, I definitely would appreciate it. Yeah. Um, no doubts at all about that. I want to sell as Etsy's insurance. Too many good sellers on eBay getting suspended with very poor information on why. Yeah. yeah. And that definitely, and that happens as well on, on Amazon. Um, as well. Uh, well, and eBay's cracking down too with the adult stuff, like the Playboys on regular eBay. Um, a kid's father that my son plays with for baseball, he just got two-day suspension Ooh. for Playboys. Um, I think they kicked off 10 or 20 of them. You know, they had the old, you can't show, like, nipple or stuff like that. Which right. So a lot of Playboys don't, and the older ones. He You're said, right, the older ones don't, He right. said he was selling, like, pre-80s anyways, you know, but they still kicked off a bunch of them, and there's still tens of thousands of them on there, you know. And they suspend them two days, so I think they're cracking down now to clean it up too you know, moving into June 15th. Right. And well, I think that they're going to have a lot, as, I, as yeah. I looked out at my notes, I think they're going to have a lot of things jumping onto there that really shouldn't be on there because yeah. people are going to, I mean, it's like in the old days before we got smart mm -hmm. or smarter, not that we're smart yet, right. before we got smarter, how many times did we try to sell jarts? <laughs> Too many times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, for anybody who's well, not, it's so tempting. You buy them for five bucks at an auction; they go for one hundred and fifty. So it's very tempting to yep. sell them. Yep. And then at some point, said, "You know something? I'm not going to buy charts anymore. I can buy them for five dollars." But yeah. for anybody, anybody much younger than us, uh, jarts are lawn darts, w which were always a lot of fun because they had metal tips on them. Yeah. Weird thing about a bunch of drunks at a barbecue yeah. throwing, <laughs> throwing things with metal yeah. tips on them. Guess what ended up happening? So they're um, you're not allowed to sell them anywhere at this point. They're a recalled product, I believe, and they're on the right. band. Oh, yeah. you, you just you cannot sell them anywhere. So people do sell them with fleas and all that kind of thing, but you're not allowed to do that. But back in the day, we used to try to sell them because oh, yeah. again, well, where else can you sell them? No, oh, 150 dollars. Yeah. I paid five dollars. Yeah, no, and, and what would end up happening is somebody would buy them and they pay for them. Then eBay would crack down afterwards, and you'd get a yeah. strike or whatever against you. But meanwhile, you had the money. Right. You know, and yeah. back then we weren't thinking long term, big picture. Now right. certainly we wouldn't even buy the no, don't even buy the charts. About it. No, no, worthless. If you listen to items, you can get your account closed. I'm not listening to anything new. It's like 2002. Well, how many people know like that, that though? Like, no, I didn't say know I that. had some yeah. sealed Playboys and I could list them there. I put them on as new and then you know, yeah. I get in trouble. Wouldn't even know that. Well, uh, definitely do take a look. If you see anything there that I need to to yeah. take off, definitely do let me know and I will. Um, they're they're kind of playbills. Is what I'm trying to sell. Yeah. Um, but again, they're not. You know, they're not brand new by any means. They're right. still 20 years old, but still. Yeah, I'm, I've, I welcome to my life, Hawk. Stuff happens to me all the time. I don't know if it's an eBay thing. Our inventory just messed up because of Celebrate, but we definitely oversell some items every now and then. There are a lot of people complaining about that. I've been lucky that has not happened to me, um, so I'm not aware of it. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of other people saying it's happened to them. Yeah. That has not happened to me yet. Um, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones as far as that goes. Um, do you want to? Oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, no. Well, no. Uh, so one other quick question. You can't see anything that's buried by the bush. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
<laughs> I'm not even gonna. Yeah, she totally threw me. Oh, Congratulations! Yeah. No, no, Brian totally threw me off. That was a good one. Um, I thought yourself, Playboy, is no naughty bits are showing. So confused. Yeah, see, and that's it's, it. And it's whatever they. It's whatever mean, they deem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, they're the judge and jury. That's the scary part about it. I want to follow up on another story from last week. Um, how's the box breaks going? Um, I, probably as good as they were last week. We hit well, so we have there have been a few changes. We have nine people interested, okay. and I'm learning all this as we go that mm -hmm. you need to take Venmo or some cash app or something. So now I got to go right now. The, the kid that's doing the breaks is putting his information on, but I got to go find my debit card to do the cash app, I guess, or Venmo or credit card. But nevertheless, we only have nine spots filled out of how many? 30. Potential. Okay, so, and it's been almost a week since we he put it on a new Facebook site. And uh, so only nine out of 30. So I don't know if these people are just going to get nervous and back out or what, but it's definitely feeling slowly. So I might look into another, you know, avenue to sell them out one by one on eBay or I might rip them. Who knows? You know, we'll see. I got six, you know, $6,000 paperweight. So. Well, you could put, you could sell that on eBay, correct? Yeah. I mean, I'd have to get 200 a piece to get my money back per card, you know, per box, you know, how many boxes are there? Uh, we have 10 per case. So 30 total boxes, $6,000 all in. So I can probably get my money back, I would think, at some point. Right, right. But there's the problem. We're not in the business to get our money no, back. No, and then less the fees and all that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Or if I rip it, I could get burned, or I could pull a $10,000 card. So that's, an, that's another angle. <laughs> you feeling lucky? <laughs> no. <Huck. laughs> no. I'm saving myself for the 52s. So <laughs> Crispy Toys is here. How's it going? Thanks for coming by. All right. You, you um, that, that was the charts. Um, right. A lot of injuries, a lot of injuries. A lot of people were just, you know, and I remember, not my rambling story of the week, this is a bonus rambling story. I remember being a kid and uh, my parents had a party in the backyard <clears> and they were playing, you know, people were drinking rolling rock and strows, as a matter of fact, because we knew how to party back, <laughs> in, back in Cleveland. Um, and people were drinking the beers and, you know, whatever. And I just remember, you know, they're all playing that. I mean, well, you got kids around. Yeah. You know, and we're running around and well, you hear them back, back, like back, a child back. Died. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. You know, they were like yelling like back, back, back because those things were, you know, sure. flying through the air and kids yeah. are, you know, you're in the backyard. Kids don't know any better. They're just chasing exactly. each other. They're not like, oh, I can't, I can't interrupt the game. <laughs> you got this giant piece of metal coming down. Yeah, true. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So that was a wonderful idea. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the other thing I wanted to ask you, and you didn't bring over, what were you supposed to bring over today? Your money? No, you brought my money oh, over. Thank right, you. Right. You're welcome. Jerseys. Yeah, oh, jeez. Well, you gave it away that we could have done it next week. Eh, we could do it next week as well. But let's talk about it real quick because it's here on my list. And I don't want to retype right. it next see, week. That's why we got to prep that. If I said let's prep it, then see, we got to <laughs> wing it. We're always winging it. <laughs> and it makes the best. Well, I'm going to read what Brian said first. I, okay. I do know a nice box when I see one. Thank you. I have some experience <laughs> there, I hope. The tough like, yeah, type of stuff I sell. There you go. Um, Everybody with these risque jokes are totally throwing me off my game tonight. Oh, it was? Like this. It's either that or the uh, moonshine, one or the other. If that's in the house, how's it going? No, nope, no, nope. we uh, only have the channel here. Um, I had to sign a contract to make sure. Yeah, I exclusivity. Yeah, exactly. Exclusive deal, nice. Yeah, nice. I mean, we got you locked out. Legal for, stuff, I can't take it. Got you locked out for 30 years, what can I say? Um, but so you purchased some stuff recently, yeah. um, and everybody knows or, or – feels that the sports card and sports memorabilia markets are, are red hot. Yes. Except certain autographs, certain <laughs> autograph items. So why don't you tell, why don't you tell them quickly uh, what you picked up and, and what you found? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing to me. So I had a customer that, well, he was my customer. Then he worked for me at the warehouse and he moved out of state and now he's back in Rochester. He's getting married and he needs some money for the ring and the wedding and all that jazz. So he's compiled a huge collection of jerseys, some helmets and so forth. And I think at this point, I bought maybe 25 autographed jerseys from him, um, five, you know, the large helmets and, uh, you know, some baseball, mostly football. So so when you say autographed jerseys, are these autographed by uh, big stars? Yeah, or just, some are decent name, Hall of Famers. Hall of yeah, Famers, okay. And when you say a jersey, yeah. if I were to go to the local champion store or whatever right. happens yeah, to be yeah. making it, 
what would these jerseys run me off the rack? Even, no. even like a replica one's got to be 80 bucks. Authentic ones could be 100 150 or $200 even. So All right. So, yeah. so I've got an $80 to $150 jersey, mm -hmm. and I go wherever I can find a Hall of Famer, and I get the jersey signed, yep. and it's authenticated? Yeah, by the top company, yeah, Beckett or PSA. So I have an authenticated, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, say, a hundred dollar jersey yeah. signed by a Hall of Famer and yep. authenticated. Correct. God, that's got to be worth what? Two hundred bucks. Your investment into it has to be well over that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Surprisingly, you can buy these things for forty, fifty, sixty, seventy-five dollars on eBay, and I think part of the reason was a lot of these come out of those box breaks where they put the jerseys in. You know, so they're. I think that might kill the market a little bit. So I don't know if they're cheaper, but people are into it to buy the. You know, they want to get LeBron James. I want the they want Joe Montana Jordan. jersey. Exactly. And I got. You know, they get Mel else. Renfro, who's a Hall of Famer. Was he Detroit Lions? Uh, he was uh, Cowboys. 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 Yeah. I should know that. Name. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you're some Cowboys. Well, I'm thinking of the blue jersey with the gray, but uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, like it goes for like forty, fifty dollars. With you know, it's either back at JSA or PSA, so they're all authenticated with the, the card, the mm -hmm. hologram. And I'm looking these up, and I was dumbfounded. You know, you know Thurman Thomas, even at a hundred dollars, the guy's a legend. You know? Well, let me ask this because I know that Thurman Thomas has has come to shows around Rochester. No, he was what? five to ten dollars thirty years. Well, ago. no, what what was he charging to sign? I think nowadays he's like a hundred bucks. So yeah. basically, if 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 I met Thurman Thomas at a show and bought a ticket, it would yeah. be a hundred dollars to get something signed. I've yeah. got to pick up the jersey. Yeah. So I've definitely got two hundred dollars. You sent it out to get authentic. I was just going to say, and it's not authentic. Twenty-five dollars at least. Wow. Yeah, it was just amazing. Some of these names, it's just crazy. And and that's one of those deals. I can't speak for you, but it's one of those deals that I hate to make. <clears throat> yeah. Because I feel so bad. Because I think I think in my head I'm ripping the seller off, but yeah. I'm not. Right. Because I can show yeah. this is you know I could go on and buy these all day long for this price. Yeah, and, and, and you, you almost realize that you almost that, try yeah. to talk them out of right. selling it to you. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like I go, I'm gonna make you this offer. I'm gonna pay you half what they're selling for, but it's not a lot of money. But he understood. He knew it. He needed the money, and you know he bought them at a discount that way, either through breaks or on eBay. It's just, you know, and some were you know, harder to find signatures like, uh, who's it, Charles Johnson? Mm -hmm. You know, he was 150. So, but no. So one, there were some good ones. Yeah, no one, no one was really more than one. No, as good as they were, no one was really more than 150 bucks. And wow. they were all all pros or Hall of Famers. It's crazy. So I guess, I guess the lesson of that is if you are into sports memorabilia, that would be a place to be looking at and buying things um, because yeah. that's dirt cheap. I mean, that's, if you're a fan of a team, buy those jerseys uh, yeah. and wear it. I, I mean, as much as I, as much as I would hate damaging something or other, because again, the collector in me says, Oh, it's autographed. Yeah. It's this, it's that. Still, if I want the Jersey, it's of cheaper a team, than buying a Jersey at Dick's. Yeah, <laughs> definitely is. Definitely is crazy. I live close to the Erie PA. So when Connor McDavid played hockey here, I jumped on the bandwagon early for his nice. guys about cases of upper deck. Wow. Very good. Smart. Yeah. Very good. Absolutely eBay addicts in the house. Thanks for showing oh, up. Hit How's the like going? button. Thank you. You yeah. know something? I need. To, we need to hire you just to tell us that because I never remember to do that. Well, and that what, what the um, what Jason had mentioned there about uh, the hockey player being from around there um, yeah. as well. That that ties into a video that we did a long time ago about knowing your uh, area and your yeah, region. Right. And Cal Ripken played here in 1980, I believe it was. 81. Yeah. 81. Yep. And I actually was at a sale where they had photos and the person went and they had taken some photos from the stands of Cal Ripken. And I think I paid $25 for this big box of photos. Yeah. Um, and I went through it and I sorted out about eight Cal Ripken photos and the eight photos went for $150. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And they literally were just snapshots Very from the cool. stands of a, yeah. of a fan of Cal Ripken. So anything yeah. that had Ripken in it, I put together in one lot and got $150 out of it. Yeah. Um, so Cal Ripken stuff is, is common around here. I'm sure that there's some, uh, who was it, Connor? I think it was you had said. Yes, um, McDavid. Yep, Connor McDavid. Yep. I don't know my hockey anymore. Yeah, um, I'm sure there's some of his stuff around. There. Another another little insider tip. Uh, years ago, and I cannot remember which school, some insider tip. I'm going to botch it. <laughs> but um, Ken Dryden uh, actually went to college in upstate New York, and I cannot oh, wow. think of which school it is. Cool. And I actually years ago came across a yearbook with him in it oh, playing cool. goalie, yeah. and it, that ended up selling. It didn't sell for nearly what it should have because. Yeah. That was a long time ago Before when I was crazy. Yeah. Well, it was also a long time ago where 
I paid two dollars and I get twenty dollars out of it. Exactly. Wow, I did great. You know, now yeah. of course I'd be asking one hundred fifty on it or whatever. Yeah, at least. Um, but you know, so Very just cool. kind of know those things. Know who went to school around your area, all that kind of stuff. You, you'd be amazed. Um, I, yeah. I brought it up before. I sold a yearbook with Tom Galasano, which a lot of people may not know who he is. He's a yeah. billionaire, I believe. Oh, he yeah. started paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. He went to a local school, and so he's in four high school yearbooks up here. Cool. I picked up a, it was about a hundred dollars. I sold one yeah. for. Very cool. So you can find that kind of stuff. Just know who's in your area. Exactly. Oh, Logan, what's up, buddy? Hey, Logan. Thanks for showing up. I got your comic books. I'm going to be home in a half hour, and I'll give them to you then. Hang in there. Nice. <laughs> um, now on to the main topic, and uh, do very local history on them. Yep, yep. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, I know somebody or other up this way in Rochester found some Frederick Douglass stuff, oh, wow. and I cool. actually found back years ago, a couple of newspapers that Susan B. Anthony was the publisher of, her and Elizabeth Stanton uh, Cady were publishers of, yeah. because cool. Seneca Falls is just down the road from us. And, you know, their their names were on the masthead, and I know I got some pretty good money out of those as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even know it when I bought it. They were just folded down newspapers in a box lot. So those cool. are all things to be looking for out of your, out of your regular area. Um, we're actually going to go a little bit long tonight, but all right. no big deal. Um, all your rambling stories that long? Wow, what are yours is? Um, <laughs> so basically the gist of the, the main part of the show tonight is let's all step back and, and, and we're certainly not eBay cheerleaders. You've watched our channel. You know that we will call eBay out when, when we think they did something mm -hmm. silly. We will call eBay out when there's a problem, uh, when we've had an issue. We, we will be completely honest about that. We've had a few problems throughout the years. We've had a few issues throughout the years. There are some things that I would be happier if they fixed. I, even something as simple as put in a pre-1900 on the item specifics. I do sell older magazines. Yeah, People do want to buy older magazines. So put in a pre-1900 and that problem is solved. It's easy enough to do. I put an 1865. It should, it should accept that. I don't see why it wouldn't. Right. It's not... It's, <laughs> It's not like putting in all the years from 1800 through 1899 are going to take much time. And they're not going to take much space on the server. Right. So there are areas that, that I feel that they should improve. I, I think we can all be in agreement on that. But if eBay and Amazon were not around, and when I see eBay and Amazon, obviously, I mean, not just specifically them. I also mean Etsy. I mean, all the right. other sites. I mean, <laughs> the online selling that's available to us now. Think back to the 1970s and what what it would have been oh, like. Geez. We would have been we we'd be starving basically, yeah. or we would be, we would have we'd be some, doing something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or we'd have some little corner store that was you know eclectic. I mean, maybe the Strand in New York City can make it selling books. Maybe a few of the big booksellers, right. you know, was selling ten thousand dollar books and twenty five thousand dollar books and all that kind of thing. But you know, how many? Bookstores can can Rochester handle? Just to use that as an example, well, it two, limits three, your, it limits your growth as well. And it also limits, you know, yes, maybe you could do a mail order type business and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you do you know what it would cost to advertise in some of those magazines, oh, the trade magazines? You know, they were thousands, charging you so, or so much per page, but yeah. a little classified in the back, sure, so yeah. or so much yeah. per letter. So yeah. Word, I guess, is what it is. So you're spending twenty five dollars to put at the back of a book journal, you know. Uh, old books available, send for want list and put your address. Yeah. And that cost you $60 a month or $40 a month to put that yeah, up. Right. And you're hoping somebody sends you a want list. Oh yeah. Um, eBay and Amazon are, are just amazing what they offer us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, take us back 12 years ago and where you were and what has happened, what has transpired since then. Yeah, I mean, since my father passed away, we were partners for for years, and then I took everything over when he passed away. And uh, you know, we started. We were small, I and mean, we were big for Rochester as far as you know, card shop. You know, we were one of the known card shops, but as far as online, we weren't very. Big well, you were you were cards. <clears throat> you had had comics back in the day. Yeah, the cards, comics, toys, you know, and toys. We, yep, we did. You know, over the years it changed, but yeah, that was our main thing when I when was in high school and out of high school. Sports cards, comic books, toys. You know, then we kind of got into record albums, magazines later on. But, you know, we had 10,000 items on eBay, I think. Well, I'm even going back. Uh, even before that, you were you were just a retail store. Oh, yeah, that was it. And, yeah, and you it, were, we were struggling. Yeah. yeah. 
you were. You know, if we didn't buy a big collection of sports cards, we would have no sales. You know, I had a couple steady buyers that one guy would buy and he'd come in every Friday with his family. If I had a 1957 top set or a partial set, he'd spend two, three, four, five hundred. And I had a few customers like that. And you were my customer and you yep. spent good money. And without these small cust you know, group of customers, I'd be dead in the water. Yep. You know. And and then your father passed mm -hmm. and you were burdened with some debt. Yeah. Not that you're not burdened with some debt now, but the, but <clears throat> but one thing that you said to me, and it's absolutely true, um, and, and I wrote it down on here was now you have good debt. And there is such a thing. And we did yeah. the video about it, about, you know, don't be afraid to borrow to build your business up. Right. You know, you've got debt with the warehouse. You've got a mortgage on the main building. Yeah. You've got, you I believe you owe some money on some of the machines and all that kind of stuff yeah. for your, for your laundromat, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But that's all good debt exactly. because it's all debt that's making you money right. or that you need. I mean, the warehouse yeah. may not be making you money per se, yeah. but you need it. I yeah, mean, right. you have Keep to have it. going. Yeah, it's a necessity. Yeah. Definitely. As opposed to the, well, back the, then, I had credit card debt. Yeah. If I had to buy a collection or you know get a cash advance or you know um, they had QVC, we might have bought some bats to resell, or whatever. You know, we were using our credit card, go to Sam's Club, buy product, credit card. So we amassed tons of credit card debt. Yes, you did that, and with the interest, you know, compound interest. It you know it was killing me for a few years after my dad passed away. But I you know I grew the business with eBay and Amazon. And help me slowly get out of it and grow and grow and you know now I'm buying almost any collection I can get my hands on without anyone's help, which is great. I love that freedom. Right, right. And again, and you're buying all these large collections, and you were able to market them because of eBay and Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And that's what really what it comes down to. Um, the 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 sales that I'm doing. If you had told me years ago when I first started. You know, because because obviously you couldn't tell me back in the seventies because yeah. I'd be like, "What's this internet? What are you talking about?" <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we're gonna have flying cars just like popular science shows too, <laughs> um, which they don't have flying cars yet. Soon, soon <laughs> any day now, any day Elon now. Elon Musk is working on it. They're always five years away. Yeah. Um, but if you if you had told me when I when I first got into into this, the kind of money that I would be making, and again, I'm not, I'm just a one man band doing it on the side. Right. And my sales, I just look at them and I just go, that's, that's amazing. And, and I've right. not lost money from day one. And part of it is that I'm cheap, you know, well, let's be honest. If I pay a dollar for, you know, a box of books, which is what I was doing back in the day, yeah, you smart. buy 20 yeah. books for a dollar. It's kind of hard to lose money. Right. Yeah. Um, like that gentleman there on YouTube that had mentioned he bought, <clears throat> you know, $50 for 20,000 postcards. Yeah. It's really hard to lose money. True. And so I would, you know, do a deal, you know, go to an auction and I'd spend $25, which was a lot of money back in the yeah. day. And then I'd list it. And wow, I sold six books at, at $8 a piece. I got 48, I yeah. almost doubled my money and I've still got more stuff left over. Yeah. So I started out small, but it was amazing. I mean, it's just amazing the money that's out there. And, and I think all of us need to be, yeah. need to be thankful and step back. And, and like, you know, Carl the Lazy Reseller saying, some people are just always negative about everything. Right. And again, yes, there are negatives about it. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's way not, more it's, positive. There are way, way more positive. Even for me losing 100,000 listings, I still need them. And what am I going to do? I'm going to grow the non-adult area up, build that up. And it'll, in six months or a year, maybe by Christmas, we'll be at the same sales. Who knows? Well, and, and that price, I was talking <clears> with uh, Radio Parts, who who hasn't made it here. He, he regularly comes. Uh, shout out to you, Mike. I'm sure you're, you're watching this on the replay. Um he was saying that his sales, and I'm not telling any sales out of school, he was saying his sales were a little bit slow over the Memorial Day weekend. And I told him, don't focus on that because you're in it for the long haul. We're both in it for yeah, the long haul. Absolutely. A lot of people watching us are in it for the long haul. We're not quick flippers. We're, right. we're long tail. We're long haul. Things are going to slow down a little bit over the summer for a few different reasons. Number one, nobody's, I mean, I haven't gone anywhere since December of 2019. You think I don't want to go on a vacation? I most yeah. certainly want to go on a vacation. Sure. I'm, I'm jonesing to go somewhere. And I'm not the only person. Um, last year was a was a wasted year for a lot of people. Um, things are opening back up. People will be going on vacation. People will be, hey, you know something? I got that boat and I didn't take it out last year. I got to right. take it out this year. And then yeah. to make up for it, they're going to go out twice as often, et cetera, et cetera. So, Sales are going to slow down a little bit over the summer. They always do. They typically do. But when you're sitting down tomorrow 
and your listing. You're listing for October. And if you tell yourself that I'm listing for fourth quarter, I'm listing for the Christmas season, these things are going to fly off the shelf right. come October, November, December. <clears throat> it, it gives you the what you need to kind of get through the listing because I've been there as well. There's, I've listed what, 10 items Saturday, 10 items Sunday, 10 items Monday, five Tuesday, five Wednesday. What is today? Wednesday. So I have listed 40, yeah. 40 items on Etsy. I think I've gotten nine views. It's discouraging on that part. It is yeah. discouraging because I've yeah. listed 40 items. And I've got nine views total and nobody cares. Right. But I've been doing this long enough to know maybe I don't have the right 40 items on. Well, you're going to build it up. To I'll get up to 50. I'll get up to right. 60. I'll get up to 70. Yeah. And suddenly I'll be at 200 items and I'll make my first sale. And I'll say, yeah. oh, that's sold. I've got other things like that. And I'll list more things like that. And then I'll be yeah. up to 300. I'll make another sale. I'll be at 500. Yeah. I'll make two sales. And that's just the way this game works. And I think we all know that in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So when you're listing the stuff and the sales are slow, do not get discouraged. Look at the long picture, the long tail. Yeah. These things will be selling come October, November, December. Um, and if, if you have that mindset going in, it'll keep you from being discouraged. List yeah. every day uh, and, and you'll be surprised and you're going to sell some things. And, and we do try to show you the bolos. Uh, every Saturday we do have a bolo. And a lot of times you show the heavy hitting items. Yes. And the, the really, <clears throat> some really fascinating items that you come across. And I, I show things like paper bag. I show crazy things like that, yeah. that we could all find out there that nobody else thinks to list a paper bag. Right. And so it's, it's a nice contrast, I think with the channel. Sure. And if you watch it, no matter which way you want to go, if you want to go high end and, and, and get the big ticket items, you could follow what Mr. Magazine does and definitely do that. If you just want to find the oddball esoteric ones and you sit there and you say, and, and, I, and I guess the thing that makes me happiest is when I sell something, and I bring it up to Mrs. Papergoy and I show it to her and I say, this sold for $15. And I get the eye roll yeah. of why did somebody buy that? Yeah. And, you know, she, she did that with the paper bag, by the way. Nice, yeah. <laughs> she did it with the sep second paper bag that I showed, by the way. Um, but it's just amazing the things that we can sell. What do you think the odds of me being able to sell an empty paper bag from a Philadelphia record store if I had a brick and mortar in Rochester and that were my only outlet. If you did sell it, it'd be, have to be like a dollar. Mm. <laughs> Probably unlikely. <Yeah. laughs> and I believe it went for $15 or something right. rather like that. And, and remember that. Just remember that I was able to sell a paper bag for $15 that wasn't even in my area. And, yeah. and those, are the, those are the things that, that eBay and, and Amazon allow us to do. Um, and I'm certain that the person that bought it was very happy with it as well because you know maybe they worked at it as a kid. Maybe yeah. they, they shopped there all the time. Whatever the reason is, they got nostalgia and they got a little bit of their childhood back, I'm expecting. Yeah. Um, or they collect record store bags, which yeah. who knows? But they, they were happy as well with their purchase. And this would not be available without, without eBay. Yeah. It just yeah. wouldn't be. Absolutely. Do either of you sell on Facebook Marketplace? I apologize. This question has been asked before. Uh, do not. Um, Not yet. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. I wrote down on here when I was talking about doing the uh, Etsy and all that stuff, I have to learn Facebook. And that literally is written down over here. Um, we've talked about it any number of times. And, and that's another great way to sell stuff and a great way to buy stuff. And we've talked about it any number of times about we really need to start doing it and put stuff on there because yeah. you do have the storefront. Sure. I've got the day job and I don't necessarily want people showing up at the house, but you've right. got the storefront yeah, and the availability to, to do that. <clears throat> at some point we're going to do it. Um, yeah. it, which actually raises yet another thing that I was going to bring up. You've got Facebook marketplace, you've got Craigslist, you've got oh, eBay, right. you've got Etsy, you've got Bonanza, you've got Discogs, yeah. you've got gun brokers, You've got um, Never eBay, you've got whatever. There are sites out there that you can sell. I'm sure there are sites out there to sell cars on. I'm sure there's yeah. sites uh, I offer, yeah. Poshmark, yeah. and so uh, Macari, and so on, and so on, and so on. Anything that you're looking to sell that's, that's legal, there is a site out there that caters to it and specializes to it. And it's got people out there willing to spend money on it. And you can, you can peddle your wares at all these different things. 
a lot different than the old days where you had to get up at, you know, you have the brick and mortar or you had to get up at 530 in the morning and schlep down to the flea market and put it all yeah. out and hope, hope that somebody wants to buy it. Yeah. So to eBay and Amazon and all the rest of the sites, I, I really would like to say thank you. Um, again, I, I know you get dumped on a lot, but let me ask one other question. And in Canada, we have whatever that is. Kijiji. Kijiji. Cool. Jumanji. Um, <laughs> yes. It's getting a little late and the moonshine's wearing off. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Sure. How many items do you sell in a week on eBay, roughly? Uh, 1,500. Wow. I don't know. On eBay? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I sell roughly 100 on eBay. Yeah, factory and Maltese and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Items, yeah. And I sell 100 a week on eBay. Out of those 100 a week, I might have a problem of some sort with one of those. And probably not. I realistically probably have a problem once every two to three weeks. Yeah. You're running 90, I'm running 99.5% problem free on eBay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you're probably running, if, if you, if you count the multis, like if, as long as you're not counting the invoicing problem as 48 problems, right. you're counting it as one problem. Right. You're probably running 99% positive. Yeah. I'd say 98 100. to 90. Yeah. 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 Which, which is really, really good. I mean, yeah. 98 to 99% of the transactions that happen, happen flawlessly. Yeah. True. That's amazing. It yeah. really is. So, so I, I just wanted to take this show just to, to, to reflect on the positive and how lucky we all have it and the opportunities that are available to us that, that were not available back right. in the day. They just were not. There's, there's no chance. And as we talked before the show, if you had kept at only the retail store, we'd be the uh, hundred, we'd be the hundred dollar peddlers. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, so I know this is a little different than a lot of the shows we have out there, but, but, but I think we need to reflect on, on how, how wonderful just, the entire internet is yeah. really and, and the opportunities that it affords us. Um, I want to say something. Sure. Mike, thanks for showing up finally. And I know the reason you showed up was to hear the rambling story of the week. I can't wait to hear this. Is yeah. it coming up? It is coming up here. Yes. I just want to check real quick and make sure there's nothing else. Oh, Run Jason through those has real something, quick. Yep, Jason, something very important. Prime time goes live in about 24 minutes now. Okay. Yeah. And we will give him another shout out there. Definitely yeah. give him a shout out. And thanks for your parts. When you watch the replay, we did a shout out to you earlier. Yeah. Uh, I love you. Yeah. I, I gave you a you shout again. out. Yeah. I gave you a shout You got to watch the replay. Who um, wants to hear this live, the rambling story? That's what these people come here for. That is true. That is true. Give people a moment to settle down, settle in. This, this rambling story of the week. Oh, let me do that right. The rambling story of the week is actually about Mr. Magazine. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and a trip that Mr. Magazine, mysterious benefactor, and I made out to San Diego. When have we gone out to San Diego and why? To the Comic-Con? We went to the Comic-Con oh, together. It's going. <laughs> so, and I mean no disrespect by this, Mr. Magazine. There are times when you have a little bit of braggadocio. Where really? <laughs> if you knew what that meant, <laughs> where sometimes you act a little big time, although you may not necessarily be quite as big time as you think you were at the time. Ask all these people. They've never seen that, didn't they? <laughs> so it was a Hot Wheels that was up for sale, as I recall, by George Barris. George yes. Barris Batmobile Hot Wheel. Yes. And you wanted it for your collection. It was, yep. it was a really, really nice piece. Yeah. And you wanted to get in line because at Comic Con, if you've yeah. ever been out there, there are lines for mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything there is. There, there are lines to get in the lines. Um, it's amazing out there. But you wanted the piece. And I remember a mysterious benefactor asked you, he said, you, know, you said, I want that. And I forget what scale, 124 scale, something like that. Yeah, it was like a large scale one. Yeah, it was a good yep. piece. Yep. And uh, mysterious benefactor said, well, what does it cost? And you said, if you ask, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. And you got up in line and you got up to the front. Wait, didn't I need to borrow money from that? You needed, that's yeah. the punch line. You, were, you stepped oh, all over, you stepped well, over the punch line. Going so Mr. Magazine said, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Gets up to the front of the line. They told him the price. 
And he had to turn the mysterious benefactor and say, can I borrow some money? It might have been cash only, I think. Yeah, and I had a credit card. Yeah, I think it was cash only. Oh, that's Crazy. a good story. That is well, a good one. I guess next Wednesday I'm going to tell my own Comic-Con story. Well, what a nice friend <laughs> Paper Goy is. So this was the last rambling story of the week. We're going yeah. to mm -hmm. stop that. <laughs> Hold on. Mike, we, in five seconds, tell me what this whole show is about. eBay, good. Internet, good. Amazon, good. Everyone else complains a lot. We are guilty of complaining some as well. Uh, but overall, be very grateful and thankful for what eBay, the opportunities they have. And I sold a paper bag for $15, and I would not have been able to do so at a local store. There you have it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Good times. We could, we could just do 30-second shows from now on. All righty. So let's uh, say our last goodbyes. I see a couple other people All talking right. in there. The recent online selling needs to be appreciated, especially compared to yeah. standard brick and mortar. No, sure. absolutely. It's, it yeah. is absolutely amazing. And just just the overseas reach. I mean, just yeah. even that over there, uh, just the number of sales that we make overseas. Uh, watch our web interpret video if you haven't seen that already. Uh, reach out to us with some questions because I, I think a lot of people have questions. I know a couple of people have signed up for it yeah. based off of our video, and I Good. told them to let us know how it goes. Yeah. Um, and we're having some a ton overseas lately, like, like a dozen, 20 pieces at least. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep, and it's it's kind of amazing just the opportunities that are there. So um, do hit the like button. We never do say that. EV Addicts did tell us to say that. Do hit the like button if you could. Uh, would appreciate that. Uh, Thanks for showing up. Oh, Amazon Seller 99. Yep, hey, you made it. You, you get credit. Let me mark uh, Let me mark you as having attended. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a purple lily one. Fun show. Appreciate uh, thank it. Thank you. you. I definitely we do tried. appreciate we do it. We, we did want to have a fun show this week because ever. Not everyone, but a lot of people have been doing doom and gloom lately, and and there is some merit for for the doom and gloom. We we were guilty of that as well, but but I did want to kind of step back a little bit and be be very very thankful. Yeah, there you go, Mike. Hit the like button. So, all righty, I think we we did go long today. Do apologize for that, but I, but I think we did need to get this topic out there. Uh, a lot of fun tonight. Yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody. Really interactive. A lot of people did show up. Do definitely appreciate that. Uh, Mike, catch it on the replay. And uh, we will see you next week. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.